Heidi, and welcome back to the workshop. In today's episode, I'm gonna be taking the first actual tangible step to go from being a journeyman bladesmith to being a master bladesmith. And you guys might remember about a year and a half ago, I completed my journeyman smith testing, and that process is really similar to the master smith testing with a couple of key differences. Key differences is that it's way harder. But basically, just like JS testing, master smith testing has two different steps. There is the performance test, and then there is the test set of five knives that you need to present to a panel of judges. But the performance test, what we call the cut and bend test, is what we're gonna be working on today. Basically, I need to build a knife that can chop through two by fours, cut through free hanging one inch rope, still shave arm hair after that, and then get thrown in a vise and get bent 90 degrees. Now, the reason for chopping through a two by four is to make sure that you have decent heat treat, that it's not gonna get dull, and that you know how to do proper edge geometry for chopping. The reason to cut the free hanging one inch rope is that they know that your edge geometry is thin enough that it's still able to go through things easily. Cause you could build something built like that and like brute your way through a two by four, but it wouldn't go through the rope. Similarly, you can go through the rope with a kitchen knife with really thin geometry, but when you go through a two by four, it doesn't like it so much. End up rolling over your edge or chipping out or something like that. And then we throw it in the vise and bend it 90 degrees and they do that to make sure that the knife is plenty durable. I actually don't know the situation that you're gonna need to bend a knife 90 degrees, but it's part of the test just an added component of complexity to it. So I've already done that for my journeyman smith testing. That knife was made out of mono steel, so just one simple plain bar of steel, and it was able to be a full tang construction, which means that the, the shape of the knife is solid. The difference with the master smith test is that it needs to be over 300 layers of Damascus, and it has to be a hidden tang, and the tang can't bend. That's a good bit more challenging than doing it just plain Jane, full tang. And so there's a couple of different design points that we need to take into account as we're drawing up this knife to make sure that the tang doesn't bend during our bend test. But before we jump too far into the actual knife making part of it, let's start making our Damascus steel. I'm gonna start off with 19 layers of 1080 and 15 and 20 high carbon steels. These are very similar steels and so the heat treat goes very similarly but we're gonna start off cleaning off the 1080 because it was a little bit gunky. The 15 and 20 was already nice. And so I'll then weld up my corners so that they don't fall apart when I throw them into the forge and then get it forge welded together underneath my 1924 Baudry power hammer. I like to use the power hammer from the get-go just because it goes a little bit faster than using the press. And right now, I'm just going to try and get my layers up as fast as possible. From going to 19 layers, we're gonna have a couple different cut and weld cycles in order to get over 300 layers. And so I wanna draw it out fairly far to make sure that I can get multiple pieces stacked up for the next get-go so we can get our layer count up faster. Another thing to note is that I need to have enough steel to make a couple of these knives. I want to have at least one to test before going and doing my actual test. And then obviously I need to have one for the knife itself. All right, well the final forge weld is now done. We should be at 19, times five is what, 95? 95 times four is 380 layers of Damascus. I'm gonna chop it off right here at the end there underneath the power hammer, and then we'll start forging out a couple of uh, knives. These are gonna be super, super simple, two inches wide, straight blades. I'm gonna forge in my bevels and my tangs, but they're like as boring as a knife can possibly be it's gonna get destroyed. I don't wanna make it super duper nice. I don't wanna add any curves because that might kinda of change the way that it bends. And so it just wants to be really simple. And so I'm not even gonna draw it. I'm just gonna go for it. The blade needs to be 10 inches and the knife can't be any longer than 15 inches overall.
Well, I got the two knives forged out. They are a little bit thinner than I was wanting, but honestly, that's not the end of the world since the thinner they are, the easier they'll be to bend. My steps after forging are three thermal cycles to help normalize the crystalline grain of the steel before doing a few more cycles, moving from hotter temps, 1700 degrees, down to 1400 degrees, which is below the critical temperature of steel. Then I let them cool off. Then I bring them back up to 1475 Fahrenheit for a 10 minute austenizing cycle before quenching in Parks 50 quench oil to harden. Them. Now, I want to talk for a second about the first part of the performance test. Actually, I guess normally we do this second after the rope chop, um, but you need to cut a construction grade pine 2x4 in half twice. Now, interesting thing about American 2x4s is that it's not actually 2 inches by 4 inches, it's an inch and a half by 3 and a half inches, um, which is fine, but that means that this is not actually as good of a dimension as it could be if it was three and a half by three and a half because that would be a square space. And that's great because Squarespace just so happens to be today's video sponsor. I absolutely love Squarespace. I've been using them for years now. Built my website on their platform and I recommend it to all of my friends who are looking to build themselves a website. The thing is, is that there are a bunch of different platforms and a lot of them are fairly similar, honestly. But Squarespace makes it so incredibly easy to lay yourself out an absolutely beautiful website. It takes hardly any time at all to be able to change things, to put products, galleries, contact pages, links to your social media, all of that stuff is incredibly easy to do using Squarespace's pre-laid out website designs. It's also very easy to sell products and accept credit cards or PayPal or however you want to do it. And things like point of sale systems that integrate with your stock so that you can manage your stock while you're selling in person and online at the same time, super cool. So I very highly recommend Squarespace if you guys are looking to present professional information, sell products or whatever it is. And you can check that out when you go to squarespace.com forward slash Will Stelter and use code Will Stelter at checkout for 10% off your first purchase of a website or website domain. Thank you, Squarespace. With that, let's keep on. After the quench and two temper cycles for two hours each at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, we go to the surface grinder to get them flattened off and prepped for bevel grinding. This includes profiling them to the shape that I want with the edge of the first knife ground to 25 thousandths of an inch at the edge and then convexed or rounded. It's time to do a little bit of testing before finishing off the real test knife. Now starting the chopping test started off okay, but the edge pretty soon started to form, which is very, very bad. Oh, what happened? That's a giant crack that runs from there over to there. With the utter failure of knife number one, I decided to leave the edge plenty thick on the other one since I believe that that was the cause of all the problems with the first one. So I left the edge at 30 thousandths of an inch and sharpened it on the slack belt so no convexing, just kind of a convex secondary bevel. I think that this is, well this is extremely hard wood and I think that the small points of contact were a little bit holding it just, just fine. I think this sharpening makes a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah. All right, our edge geometry is good. How will it do on the Benderuni test? So here's the conundrum that I'm in. I made two knives. The reason why you do that is so that you can test one out so that if something goes wrong, theoretically nothing should go wrong, but you can get through and do the bend test with it because that kind of ruins a blade. You try and do them as close as possible and then you do the bend test and that way you know that this one will handle the bend test okay. This one, I ended up taking a good bit thinner. And so I had this, the edge on this was about five or 10 thou thinner than the edge on that. And then I convexed it and I pulled that convexing up even higher than I did on this. So it broke when I was chopping. This guy, I left that edge a lot thicker, much, much thicker, more robust edge handled the two by four just fine, did the rope cut just fine, but 
I don't know how it's going to handle the bend test because I didn't get to test out the other knife. Now I have enough 400 layer or 380 layer steel to do one more knife from it, but it won't be exactly the same as this because it can't be because I didn't do it side by side and so it's really hard to say. I think we're going to try bending this. <sighs> Just to, just to see. This bend area is a lot smaller than what the real test will be, which means that there's less area for the stress to be distributed across. So if it holds up here, I'll feel good about the real one. Plus this blade is still fully hardened and the real one will not be. Is the tang just bending? Uh, it looks like the blade's bending. Is it? Yeah. No, that tang's definitely bending. Oh, well. I, I, I saw the blade definitely bending too. Maybe they're both bending, but. Oh my gosh. Oh, good Lord. Oh. Well, we had to watch the playback to figure out where the, where the middle chunk of the blade went, but it was up here on top of the mezzanine. Little, little one inch coupon. Okay, so what we're gonna do, since this did pretty dang well, it got really far before it busted. It's a really small area that was being tested. We're gonna continue and just go for it with this knife. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is blue back the spine, which is where I'll put the edge in a dish of water and then run a torch over the spine here. I'm going to do that like five or six times uh, till it's blue, hence the, the blue backing. And what that does is it softens it so that the spine is not as hard as the edge. And that means that it'll bend easier and it'll have a harder time snapping. And so basically it just protects the knife from wanting to snap. And uh, after we do that, then we'll move on to working on the tang area. I think I'm gonna grind no shoulders. I'm not gonna like do that normal tight shoulder. That's something that just helps fit ups look good. Um, but it'll be stronger if it's just a straight taper. Then in my handle material, I'll drill one large hole down the middle of it and then carve out the sides with a brooch. I decided to use some Jade G10 I have since it's a nice strong material, but it is a bit of a pain to work with. I'm gonna take this bit, I'm gonna mill a slot in the top of the handle, then I'm gonna draw a hole in from the back. And that way, I'll have a tight fit on the top and a looser fit on the bottom that can get filled with epoxy, but I will have a nice tight fit on the top where the stress is actually gonna be coming from and all that junk. I've never milled on G10 before. I know that G10 is a super wear resistant material and so it can really mess up bits uh, when you use them and bandsaw blades, I might even need to change that blade. That blade was getting old anyway. I'm gonna do some, some sketchy layout here. Something to know about G10 is that it's really important to breathe in as much of the dust as possible if you can. That way you get to go meet Jesus a lot faster in the afterlife. If you don't know Jesus or if you still have stuff to do left on earth, then you should probably wear a respirator though. Wah, 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 wah. Let's try again. So what I'm gonna do now is drill in from the back and I'll be able to meet that gap down there and I'll be able to use a, bo a brooch from both sides and uh, yeah, it'll be great. Get that thing fit up nice and tight.
Well, shoot. It cracked. Okay, well I made a new handle block and it was a lot faster than doing it the other way. Um, I actually just kind of drilled out kind of loosely up top uh, and just got the block fit as fast as possible. I didn't drill in the back at all. I'm just gonna fill this sucker with glue. It is mega crooked right now. That's fine. I've got a lot of meat here to be able to shape it and it's a, a knife that I'm gonna bend in half and so it doesn't actually matter anyway. But I'm still gonna get straightened out. Uh, next step is I need to soften the very end of my tang. And then after that, we're gonna get this thing flattened off. Then we'll drill our pinhole and then I'll glue it and shape it and then it'll be done. That's it. Oh, I should have grabbed some paper towels out. <laughs> this is the ugliest knife. All right, here we go. It's looking good. Actually, it looks really bad. I shouldn't say it looks good. Um, it looks awful. The handle is finished to a lovely 120 grit. There's a massive amount of black epoxy up at the top here. It's at a 120 grit belt finish on the blade with some scotch bright on there for classiness. A Little bit of etching just to show that it's pattern welded, but we're gonna destroy it so it doesn't really matter. So with that, I'm gonna make sure that it'll go through the rope uh, at least three times. And then after that, we're gonna go through the two by four three or four times and make sure that it's still primo. <sighs> nice. A little bit looser now. Could be a better test maybe. <sighs> All righty. Confident about that. Let's go chop some two by fours. Okay. Because this knife is so thin, it is just awful to chop with, but it's not measured in how fast it chops through two by four, it's only measured in its ability to hold its edge whilst going through it. That was no problem whatsoever. This is absolutely the ugliest knife I made. Yeah, uh, this thing's gonna be fine. The only thing that I'm worried about at this point is that the tang is gonna wanna bend. But honestly, you know what? I hold it down there. I think it'll be okay. All right. Well, I'm I'm happy with it. I think it'll I think it'll do it. Uh, I am a quarter inch shorter than what the maximum length could be. I'm a quarter inch less wide than the maximum width of the blade. I'm about a half inch shy blade wise of how long it could be. Good thing these don't have any ugly limits because I think we'd be over the max amount of ugly that you're allowed in a knife. Uh, this is truly a very, very ugly knife. But again, it's just gonna get destroyed and so it doesn't really matter. It's gonna sit hung up on my wall for the rest of time. I'm leaving for the airport in five hours. I got a pack still and all that good stuff. So yeah, stay tuned for part two. Gonna head down to Florida, hang out with some awesome folks. I'm gonna do my Mastersmith performance test and my buddy Logan Gillahan is gonna be doing his JS performance test down there as well. Very exciting stuff. And then after that, be able to get on to actually building my real Mastersmith test pieces, which will not look like this. Again, I know I've said it a bunch, but this thing is so ugly. <laughs> Good Lord. Well, I'm gonna go pack and uh, try and get an hour or two of sleep before I head off. See y'all down in Florida in the next one. Bye-bye.